Yesterday, I listened to the LA Kings' newest episode of their All the Kings Men podcast, where they discuss potential LA draft picks. And today, I wanted to have a look at five of those players that they talked about. Hi, I'm Gio. I am a professional sportscaster, and welcome to my channel where we talk about all things Pacific Division hockey. Let's go. The guest for this podcast was Will Scouch, who is a draft analytics expert and basically spends all his time developing insights and, uh, you know, gathering data on draft prospects. I will repeat a few of his points of analysis in this video, but I'm going to make it very clear what is his information and what is information I've gotten from other sources. The podcast really fo I'm going to sneeze. The podcast really focused on left-handed defensemen because that is what they feel the team is really lacking right now and probably the role within which the LA Kings are going to be looking to develop the most. The first name that came up was Pavel Minchikov, who will probably not be available by the time the Kings come around to getting their first pick at number 19, but if he is available, it's highly likely that they will want him. Minchikov is an 18-year-old Russian player coming in at six foot one and 192 pounds, which makes him a pretty decent sized defender. He'd only ever played in Russia until he was drafted into the OHL by the Saginaw Spirit in 2020, first round 52nd overall. Prior to that, he'd had such achievements as winning gold for Russia in the 2019-20 um, under 17 Hockey World Championships. He didn't log any games in the 2020 to 2021 season due to COVID cancellations, but he played 67 games in the season just gone where he went 17, 45, 62, and had a minus 14 differential on the ice. This made him the highest point scoring defenseman in the OHL this season. And he also got the highest number of shorthanded goals of any defenseman in the OHL this season at three. In the NHL draft combine, Minchikov scored in the top 25 for four four of the fitness tests, which are the VO2 test, the wing gate, uh, peak power output, wingspan, and pull-ups. He's widely considered to be a first round pick, which is why it's highly unlikely that the Kings are going to be able to get him by their number 19th pick. Secondly, Vladimir Grudinin. 18-year-old Grudinin is a much smaller defenseman at 5'10 and 159 pounds, which makes him a bit more comparable to players such as the Minnesota Wild's Jared Spurgeon or maybe the Colorado Avalanche's Samuel Girard. They spoke on the podcast quite a bit about how small small defensemen are kind of in vogue at the moment, but usually you have to balance out that lack of size with some kind of exceptional ability, such as agility or passing. In the case of Grudinen, Scouch asserts that he really shines in his fast pivoting and transitioning and is incredibly skilled with a puck. Unlike Minjikov, Grudinen is still playing in Russia, and in the 2021-22 season, he actually played in the MHL, VHL, and finally the KHL, where he's currently playing for CSKA Moscow. He's only played in six games for the team, where he scored one assist. He's currently ranked 53rd in European prospect skaters, which will probably mean a couple of rounds are going to go by before he gets drafted. Next is Mats Lindgren Jr., who is only 17 and he comes from Vancouver, Canada. He is 6 foot and 176 pounds and he currently plays in the WHL for the Kamloops Blazers, where he has been since the 2019-20 season. It was the first WHL team that he joined straight out of the under-18s Canadian Sports School Hockey League, uh, and originally he only played four games in his first season with them. However, this season he has played 68 games with the team in which he went 5-39-44 and then 0-7-7 in the playoffs. And that makes him the 12th highest defenseman for assists in the WHL and 18th highest for points. According to Scouch, he's got a relatively safe play style with good passing, solid footwork, but there is room for development there. Scott Wheeler at The Athletic wrote a really interesting article about him where he talks about the insane work ethic that he's exhibited during the WHL and also how his his, you know, past his history of being the son of an NHL player has really helped to shape him. I'll link that down below. He's currently ranked 47th of all North American skaters, so he'll be relatively early in the rounds. The fourth player I want to talk about is Lane Hudson. Hudson is 18 and honestly tiny. He is 5'8 and 148 pounds, which is 20 pounds heavier than me, and I'm a 5'7 woman. He currently plays for Boston University in the NCAA, but he has played on a number of different iterations of the US national team, including the National Development Team Program, and most recently, the Under-18 World Juniors. In a scouting report published by Smart Scouting, author Josh Tesla talks about how he has a very similar build to the outgoing Dominic Fensor, who is currently a prospect for the Carolina Hurricanes, and that BU may be looking 
looking to develop a very similar defenseman to the outgoing Fensor. What this means is that he could be in basically the best environment to really develop to his strengths, despite the fact that there may be many who look down upon his small size and build. In the podcast, Scout spoke about his ability to push into the offensive zone and really get the puck to safety, but also noted that a lot of his capabilities have really improved over the course of the past year. In an NHL article, Hudson was reported to have said that his coaches have really stressed to him that he should be using his size in a smart way and to an advantage. Hudson came in the top five of two of the fitness tests at the Combine, uh, body fat percentage and pull-ups. However, on the podcast, it was also noted that there were 16 teams at the Combine who didn't even bother interviewing him. Uh, which could be seen as a bad sign, but there is also the potential that he, given all of his attributes, could just be a little bit too niche for what some teams are looking for. He's currently ranked 26th out of North American skaters, which means we'll probably see him go in the early rounds. Lastly, let's have a look at Kevin Kaczynski. Kaczynski is a Canadian player who comes in at six foot two and 185 pounds. He currently plays in the WHL for the Seattle Thunderbirds, where he went 461-65 in the most recent regular season, and then 612-18 in the playoffs. Because of these stats, he actually got the most assists scored by a rookie in the WHL since 1999 and came second for assists of all defensemen. His points overall was fourth of all defensemen, the highest of any defensive rookie, and he came third in power play assists. He is clearly a very impressive player. However, one of the biggest criticisms that you see discussed about him online is his passing and that sometimes he just lapses in concentration or his attention to detail. In terms of style, he claims to take a lot of inspiration from the Colorado Avalanche's Kale McCarr, and he claims to watch a lot of videotape of McCarr playing with his assistant coach. Kaczynski is currently ranked seventh amongst all North American skaters, which means it's incredibly unlikely that the Kings are going to get any chance of drafting him, but there is always a chance, so I wanted to throw him in anyway. So those are five of the potential draft picks as discussed on the All the Kings Men podcast this week. I have no affiliation to this podcast. I just really enjoyed the uh, topic of discussion. I wanted to dive a little bit more more into the stories of some of these players. And after the performance of the Ontario Reign this year especially, I would be really interested to see how any of these players would develop well on that incredibly impressive offensive squad before they actually make it to the Kings proper. As always, let me know in the comments what you guys think, if any of these players stand out for you, or if you would like to see them on the LA Kings, or if there's anyone who I didn't mention that you think would be a better shout. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I will see you in the next video. Goodbye.